Citizen Television. Greetings and welcome to the Planetary Persuader. I am your host Cosmic Kev and today we are beginning with the 18th of September 2015 going all the way till uh, the 25th. So what happens this week? Well the exciting news folks it is the autumnal equinox this week. It happens at 1:21 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on the 23rd. So um we move from a place where we're focused on analysis and the last long days of summer that are cl all now they're only like 12 hours of light and we're going into this place where we know it's going to get darker and darker and darker but you know we've had a lot of light and we need that rest and autumn signifies harvest and a lot of other wonderful things that happen so we're looking forward to that when we go into libra the sun the sign of libra we are looking at harmony we are looking at balance we are looking at a way to um, engage with other people where they're as important with us and and you know we i, I would say <clears throat> even though a little different I'd have to agree with the Vedic philosophy that you know Leo through Scorpio though all those signs are dealing with the human works of procreation and making money and making art and all these wonderful things you know we're trying to sustain life here so uh, sign by sign we're going for it beginning with you Aries here you are on so greetings Aries welcome your horoscope now the beautiful thing about this week is this is probably the last full-on week of Mars in Leo. Mars goes into Virgo on Thursday the 24th at 7.18 p.m. So Mars going out of Leo into Virgo. What can we say about that? Well, you know, in Leo, we are concerned with bold strokes. And when we go into Virgo, we're concerned with precision. <clears throat> you know, it's, um, I can remember being at a little festival where they had a dunk tank and it was in Virgo time. And I just threw the first ball and it got the guy in there. And I said, oh, you got more balls. I couldn't do it after that. And so I was thinking to myself, that was a real Virgo precision throw. You know, so that's, I think that's a good way of illustrating the change. And so since we've had this Virgo transit, the sixth house transit for Aries, it's been like, well, I'm trying to perfect my life. I'm trying to be a better worker. Um, and you'll probably have more initiative. You know, if you're working for yourself, this is going to be an awesome time for you because you've got a lot of initiative. Plus, it's a good time to get physically in shape. Um, here in the West Coast, you know, the heat has died down a little bit from what it was this summer. And so we're just grateful for that. And we're able to... Um, exercise a little bit more with a little more gusto without just uh, smelling like yesterday's laundry um, and uh, you know Mercury is still retrograde in your seventh house so if communication issues are kind of coming up with you and your loved one don't sweat it blame it on Mercury retrograde everyone else does it wasn't my fault it was Mercury retrograde I'm just amazed at how universal it is it's become you know it's a 
Maybe this is just in Northern California. I'm not really sure, but yeah. No, I'm sure it's in Portland. I'm, I know it's in Ashland, so, you know. I mean, <laughs> I had one person joke to me and says, like, you know what, Ashland's more like California and Chico's actually more like Oregon. Maybe not so much weather-wise, but culturally. And I was like, yeah, I, I kind of get you. I know what you're saying there, you know. It's like Ashland's got a little that that Marin County kind of feel to it. My God, it gets worse when it feels like the peninsula, though. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All those people with the tights and the nicest dreads, you know, it's like, oh, love me, I am beautiful. You know. And Taurus, that's what you like think, think of yourself, you know. Greetings, Taurus, here's your horoscope. Um, you know, you like to be beautiful. Venus is still in Leo, and that's your fourth house. <clears throat> so, you know, you're beautiful on the inside. And I mean, isn't that all that really counts? In the long run, that's really, that is what counts. We know that. And, um, you know, Venus is moving direct. So she's she's on her way. You know, she's going to have another conjunction with Mars at the beginning of um, November. So look forward to that. It's going to be another dynamic, romantic boing. You know, and... Um, but, you know, <clears throat> so Mars moving into Virgo is actually going to give you more energy to do creative work. It's going to give you more energy to be in your heart. Now, the sun <clears throat> moving out of Virgo into Libra this week from your fifth house to the sixth house, we go from creativity to service. And it's like, you want to make some good karma? Serve somebody. You want to get yourself in physical shape? Libra time is the best time for a Taurus to do it. You know, it's a gymnasium. That's one of the things they call it. So... Just be motivated to um, do it. And like exercising with other people is a really good idea because everybody motivates each other. And together, everyone achieves more. That's the word team, right? That's the initials. So that's the way I would be thinking right now. Um, this weekend, mm, you know, I mean, I, I would just kind of lay low. I wouldn't, you know, give it too much, too much power. I think like Monday and Tuesday, your energy is going to be really cranking. You're going to be feeling great. Um, you know, later on in the in the week, you're going to get another boost of power. But I, I think what's happening is your creativity is percolating, and also your need to go out in the world and really be a part of it. Well, hello, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. So, my lovely Gemini, what can I do for you today? Sun's been in the fourth house. Sometimes the fourth house can be like the cocoon, like you got cabin fever. I mean, I, I don't know if you're watching this on a YouTube, maybe in like, you know, southern Florida or a place that has really rainy Septembers. Most places are pretty dry in the country in September. You know, it's not the super wet time. Um, you know, and Virgo's kind of like air and earth, so it's sort of like the dust sign of the zodiac. So we've been through all this dust. We're still there, certainly in the Vedic sense. We're going to be there even longer. Um, but in um, our sidereal astrology, but in Western astrology, we say, okay, we're welcoming the um, equinox, the autumnal equinox, and this puts the sun in our fifth house as Gemini's. And so what we want now is to celebrate love and look for the balance. You know, we Gemini's, we all want our, our soulmate already. You know, we're looking for that soulmate. And Libra makes that interesting balance. They they initiate, you know, really nice dates and stuff. And they and they like sweet things and luxuries and things that probably, probably wouldn't hurt. It might be a good idea to go along with this just for a little while. I mean, yeah, I, I know they can't make up their own mind and, you know, and, and I'm known as being two-faced, but, um, you know, we're, you know, this is the way. It's the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. That's what Gemini Bob Dylan said. So we're just going to, we're just going to run with that, okay? We are. We're going to have fun. We're going to be more creative and we're going to run with that. And, you know, it might even be a romantic weekend for us. I, I hear that with the moon in the seventh house. Okay. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Um... Yeah, so, you know, we're really working on our personalities and our personal style when you have a transit in the third house. It's a lot of personal style, and it's your environment, it's your brothers and sisters, your siblings, your peers, your cousins, your neighbors. And when we get into Libra, we're, we're working more on our, our tribe. 
So we're starting out the weekend, moon in Sagittarius. So you're going to be working this weekend, you know, help maybe doing charitable work, helping restore nature, cleaning up the creek or something. That sounds great. I think there is a, a creek cleanup coming up. Okay. And, um, you know, there might, you know, it, it looks like, you know, Saturday looks like kind of a rougher day, but we get into Sunday, things just seem to flow a lot better. And um, you're able to make some real progress. And I would say Monday and Tuesday will be your day to be, you know, in love and feeling relationship orientation. Um, Mars going into Virgo. I mean, I, I would say check your vehicle out. Make sure it's running smoothly. You're going to need to check that. And mobility is going to become much more important in the coming weeks. Hmm. Hello, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, okay. So, you know, Virgo time is all about values, about family. It's about making money. And, um, you know, and it's about taking care of sensual needs, taking care of your teeth, your neck, your, um, your voice, and counting your change. And, you know, things are good. Money's coming in. You know, you're doing better um, I mean what can I say when things are hard things are hard there's you, there's not really a lot you can do about it um, but you got to be thankful for what you got because that always like when you think about what you're grateful for it just changes your focus and like you start feeling happy again and so you know I mean that song when the dog bites when the bird sings I simply remember my favorite things no it's good that's good stuff no, I know, I know I don't do it as good as the woman in the sound of music, but or whatever that movie was. But yeah, it's it's good. Um, yeah, and those nuns were awesome. <gasps> That's why people dress up like nuns. It's because of them. <laughs> uh, so Leo, okay, so you're losing Mars. You know, you're losing Mars to money. You know, it's like you got to get the right tool for the right job. Okay. We go from this whole thing of family, values, money, to who your friends are, who your neighbors are, what's your environment like. Have you taken local trips? Have you checked out, you know, in, in uh, Northern California, Southern Oregon? Uh, you know, there's some places where there's some nice fall foliage already starting to kick in. And you might want to take a little drive and just appreciate the onset of fall. And appreciate your friends. Set up lines of communication, even though it's Mercury retrograde. Hello, Virgo. Well, welcome to the last Virgo weekend. And I would say for you California Virgos, this is a very California weekend because it's got Sagittarius Moon and it's still Virgo time. And that's sort of like the integrated culture of, um, of Virgo. So, you know, we got this Mercury retrograde thing going on in the second house. So what I would say is that money issues are kind of held up right now. You're sort of waiting you know, you're waiting for your ship to come in, or you're waiting for a little more uh, resource, a little more money, a little more gold. You got yourself out on a limb a little further than you wanted to. Okay, that's all. You know, anybody can do that. All right. Okay. So, but at the same time, you have a lot of magic is happening. You know, there's like a miracle all around you every single day because of this Jupiter and Virgo thing. So I want you to be very positive thought, miracle conscious, Virgo. That means finding out what's right in the world instead of finding out so much what's wrong with it. Bring on the light. Bring on the good stuff. You know, bring on your your talents and the good things you can do. That's the best we can do. If we want to build up hope in the world, we have to change our attitude and we got to bring our stuff. You know, we got to bring out what we do right. And that's going to make everything so much better. And I would say, you know, Virgo, seek spiritual relationships with Neptune and Chiron. Realize that you're in relationship for healing and to learn. And I think if you keep that in mind, everything's going to go fine. Um, Uranus is in the eighth house. There's a lot of bizarre stuff that's just out of your control. And, you know, here's the good news. You get Mars in the first house. So if you feel like you've been unmotivated, well, now's your time, chance to kick some serious ass and you know I can feel it coming on already I'm weeks ahead of this but I uh, you know I know like Pluto think of any of you who were born in say the late 50s through the mid 60s like you people are gonna have Mars trans 
go over your Plutos and your Uranus and, um, you know, it's just like there's a motivation time and, and it's going to give you strength. And it's going to give you energy. And, and so, you know, you older middle-aged people that might be watching this, I know you're old people. Now, get, you know, take advantage of that because, I mean, this is your time to shine. You know, I mean, you got that Neptune in Scorpio. It's Neptune in Pisces. There's this integrated thing. It's like we need the magic now. You got to bring on the magic. You got to bring on the faith. You got to bring on the stuff that's beyond the mundane and the everyday. And you know, and, and let the naysayers just you know feel feel smug with their egos of how smart they are. Let them have it. <laughs> let the muggles have it. That's what I say. You know, you enjoy being a muggle. It makes you more secure, groovy. <laughs> we all got friends like that, you know. It's like, it's like the new atheist, you know, somebody was telling me about it. It's like, like, well, you know, they've never caused any war. I'm like, please stop, 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 stop. You know, you stop this nonsense. We're dealing with humans here. Humans, no matter what their non-belief or belief is, are all the same ball of worms. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Libra. You know this to be true, Libra. You're like, yeah, you're so right. Okay, North Node, last little wink. The first house, what are you hungry for? Did you get what you needed in the last year and a half? This is a, this is a big question. And you're breaking, in, you're breaking into new territory because, you know, you're going to wake up on Wednesday morning. Not only are you going to tune into my radio show, but you're also going to find out that everything is great and that you're the flavor of the month and that it's going to be like that from here on out you know people concerned with justice harmony flirtation and eating sweet things and things that are affect our kidneys like beer and coffee yeah okay <laughs> so that's all fun stuff you know we want that um venus is going direct still in leo getting more direct mars though in the 12th house so i mean i don't know how you did it but you know somebody's not super happy with you it could be jealousy it could be everything i know you always think you're so nice stop that being nice isn't always really even nice. Sometimes it's disingenuous. And so we have to be, you know, we got to get into our deep spiritual side. That's what I said last week to Libra. It's like, this is, you know, we kind of have to hold back and say, all right. Now, I do know some very deep spiritual Libra people. They're not all just superficial and, you know, will sacrifice sweetness. Because there's a point where you're going to do an injustice to yourself. And then you really don't get what you want. And you're so motivated. They call you the iron fist and the velvet glove. They're, they're very good. It's, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. That's that's a Libra technique. Learn it, analyze it, know it. <laughs> Greetings, Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay. So this is kind of like the last big party weekend, you know, a Virgo time for you. And then it goes into Libra time. And that's kind of like a time for you to more like investigate your spiritual life, your karma, and sort of a lay low time. Yeah, uh, that would be it. I mean, if you're watching this early on Friday, if it gets out before 8.30 or something, yeah, Moon's still in Scorpio. Um, but, you know, for the most part, this weekend, Sagittarius Moon. Um, you'd be working on economic projects, ways of making more money this weekend. That would be smart. Um, you know, creative-wise, you've got a vision, but you want the creative arts to be a thing that motivates other people to feel healed and have a good feeling right now. That's, that's part of it. Um, Mars moving into your 11th house, though, you know, you get, you're motivated to hang out with friends and play sports. So that's kind of a cool thing right there. And, um, you yeah, know, you're working on your karma right now and you're, you're working on perfecting and completing you know, some karma in your life, and that's okay, you know, that's a good thing to do, but, and there are good friends all around you, so uh, take heart and move forward. Well, hello, Sagittarius, and welcome to your horoscope. <clears throat> all right, so you got Saturn in the first house. Saturn and Sagittarius. I've talked about this before. Um, you know, I mean, Sun conjoined Saturn is like, you're reminded you have to be careful where you walk. I work with somebody who's got a Saturn ruled sun. Um, <clears throat> and I guess in Western astrology, you'd say my, my sun would be ruled by Mars and Pluto. But Saturn, you know, is the stop sign. All right. 
you know, Mars wants to go, Pluto does too. And Pluto really, now we know that Pluto's not only, you know, about the sexual passion, but it's about love. You know, it's got a heart on it. So it's like, you know, having having that heart there, it really it shows that we're in people of vulnerability and that's, you know, that's, that's one of the things we, we discovered. So Sagittarius, you know, what I would say is... Um, Move forward because, you know, Saturn and Sag, a lot of times people are persecuted because they believe in freedom and justice. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. had Saturn and Sagittarius. I mean, I know he was a Capricorn, but Saturn and Sagittarius was Che Guevara, <laughs> you know, revolutionary from Argentina to through Chile, Bolivia, eventually Cuba. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, Saturn and Sagittarius teaches us to look at the other side of things, that freedom is a good thing to look for. You know, Noam Chomsky, Saturn and Sagittarius. Um, you know, transform the way you look at money, transform the way you look at limits. It's still an opportune year. Lever time we move to your social life more. And so, I mean, you're a party animal. You're going to get out there. You're going to be partying with the best of them. <clears throat> Well, greetings, Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. Let's talk Capricorn talk. Okay, so Saturn's and Sagittarius is your 12th house. So think about, you now if you're a middle age, you know, if you're a 40-something or older Capricorn, you can think back to 29 years ago, where you were at then, and where you're at now. And there's some similarity with the challenges you face, or maybe not at all, but they're challenges nonetheless. There were challenges then. There are challenges now. Okay. Saturn brings on the challenges. Um, <clears throat> but you want, to be, you want to do the right thing. You want to make good karma. That's the real point right now. Um, since we're moving from your ninth house, where you were learning stuff, to the tenth house, where you're performing now, you're in the public eye. So you got to bring out your best talents and skills. You got to dazzle them. You've got to bring it. You know, you're you're responsible now to elevate your act. And you know, we're we're heading towards that second half of Pluto in Capricorn. And so we are we're learning something about usefulness and what's not useful and how we can take things that we never knew we had be more resourceful and bring it. And so that's my wish and, and will for you, is that you bring good things to the table. And your love life's in some kind of weird transformation. I don't know anything about it, but um, work with it. Hello, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay. So, this is a time for you to um, build up. Build up your ability to take risk. You've gone through a lot of transformation in the past several weeks. And, I mean, this weekend's going to be a good party weekend for you. You're going to feel good. You're going to have good people around you. It feels really good. But as we go further and further into the week, actually, Moon is going to be in Aquarius on um, Wednesday morning right when the sun goes into Libra, so it's kind of like, like air on air, and, and the moon and sun trine each other at 11.34, so it starts out really nice and positive and kind of light, lighthearted, and so there's a sort of spirit of cooperation of groups, and we want to bring justice, and, you know, I hear that there, you know, <clears throat> there seems to be some kind of debate in the Democratic Party about, you know, who should be leading the country and be POTUS and all that stuff. And um, I have to admit, if you're, if you're basing it on who's related to the Queen and who is going to be more willing to sell out for Monsanto and other corporate douchebags, then that's shame on you. Shame on you and shame on your lack of commitment to elevating the people of this country. I, I just find that despicable. And in some ways, you know, I, I've heard it said that, you know, I, that this one particular person, sometimes referred to as a witch of Wall Street or the matriarch of Monsanto, um, 
you got to be really careful. You know, we have a, a horrible history of playing second best, and it seems like there's this really cool Jewish civil rights activist that's like packing out auditoriums everywhere, and it's calling the, the corporate welfare on its BS. We need to support this guy, you know. That's it. You know, we need to be lion-hearted and back him up. Because this is no time for hanky-panky with privileged punks running the country anymore. It's not working for us. You know, it's not working for the common person. It's not working at ground level. And ultimately, even for most of the rich people, it's not going to work for them as well either. So, I say happy, happy. And, you, and Aquarius, I just call on you because you're radical enough to put the man to task. As <laughs> we're in justice time. You know, you're going to be getting into your heart, you know, and your heart chakra for Aquarius is you got to move forward with this stuff. Now, with Venus and Mars and Leo, you're going to make good relationships. You're going to, you're going to have this dynamic appeal. And with Jupiter transiting your eighth house, you're going to have other people help you. So I think it's time to run with this. And it's time not to give up. And it's time not to settle for second best because, um, you know, that's the way it's always been done. You know what? what? How it's always been done is cause Hurricane Katrina, the war in Iraq, 9-11. That's because of all that, it's always been done that way kind of mentality. So stop that. Stop all that crap, you know. It's time to think positive, and it's time to support people that are trying to do something good instead of those who just want to, you know, pretend and nod and wink while they, you know, give special service to the evils of our society. <laughs> Anyhow, greetings Pisces, welcome to your horoscope. I know I had an Aquarius soap soapbox there. But it was time. <clears throat> Uranus agreed. Uh, let's see, what we got here? Um, we have Neptune visionary and um, that's what you need to be. You got Chiron there too, which is the wounded healer. So in spite of whatever's been hurting you, you can elevate and uplift others. Now, Virgo time, you've been reaching this place of harmony and balance and mutuality. But we're about to go into Libra time, which is the eighth house transit, and that is, it's a more difficult transit because it can kill you sometimes. It usually doesn't, though. So that's a good part, you know. We go through it every year. How many years you live? You see, you, you've been lucky, you've been, you've been successful every year. <laughs> now, I, <laughs> It could be also inheritance, too, in that transit. But we begin, you know, with the moon in your 12th house when, when the solstice happens and then the, um, as well as the sun being in your 8th house. So I, I think of it as like, this is a mystical time you're entering into. It's a time of psychic sensitivity. And you need to honor that in yourself. And be okay with that and this is still a week where you're going to be able to help other people a lot and you're still making good relationships you still have good support I think this weekend you're going to be more in the public eye show off some of your best talents and skills um, I think next weekend the moon is going to be in Pisces so you know we'll have a really fun discussion next weekend, not only the moon will be in Pisces, it's going to go into Aries and be a harvest moon, but it's also a lunar eclipse, it's going to be whoa! But until then, love, love. More love, more joy, more good times. We'll see you again next episode of the Planetary Persuader.